September 9th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 2 Timothy chapter 1 from the New Testament. From Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to further the promise of life in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dear child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am thankful to God, whom I have served with a clear conscience as my ancestors did, when I remember you in my prayers, as I do constantly night and day. As I remember your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I recall your sincere faith that was alive first in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am sure is in you. Because of this, I remind you to rekindle God's gift that you possess through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power and love and self-control. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, a prisoner for his sake, but by God's power accept your share of suffering for the gospel. He is the one who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not based on our works, but on his own purpose and grace granted to us in Christ Jesus before time began but now made visible through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus. He has broken the power of death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel, I was appointed a preacher and apostle and teacher. Because of this, in fact, I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed because I know the one in whom my faith is set and I am convinced that he is able to protect what has been entrusted to me until that day. Hold to the standard of sound words that you heard from me, and do so with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Protect that good thing entrusted to you through the Holy Spirit who lives within us. You know that everyone in the province of Asia deserted me, including Phygelus and Hermogenes. May the Lord grant mercy to the family of Onesiphorus, because he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my imprisonment. But when he arrived in Rome, he eagerly searched for me and found me. May the Lord grant him to find mercy from the Lord on that day. And you know very well all the ways he served me in Ephesus. God, when Paul wrote this letter to Timothy, he had maybe a year, a couple years left to live. Paul didn't know that. We know that, looking back. But Paul did know that he was possibly coming to the end of his life when he wrote this little bit more urgent letter to Timothy. And when I read these letters that he wrote to Timothy, this this mentor to mentory, this fatherly to son-like relationship that they had, I think about what if given a chance, what I would write to people that I've discipled, what I would write to them if I knew I only had a year or so left to live and and what would I want them to focus on or what would I want them to remember. And Paul talks about kind of four areas that he, that Timothy needs to concentrate on. Um, His endurance, the strength from you, God, Um, the endurance that that Paul is counting on right now, that that Paul's in jail. (laughs) There seems to be no hope. Everybody's abandoned him. That endurance, that strength uh, that supersedes anything human that we can even imagine. Second, to be aware of false teachers and concentrate on truly what the scriptures say. What does your word say, God? And then most important, go out and teach what you know to be true. And I think it's interesting that it is in this order. And we don't do it in this order. A lot of times we learn enough about the scriptures to go out and teach that we find ourselves in hot water either via false teachers or false prophets or people who are just out to get us. And then we call on the endurance part and then we kind of start that whole cycle all over again. And Paul starts his letters by saying... You need that endurance first. Uh, In fact, chapter two is going to talk about it more from a perspective of almost an athlete. You need to have that strength first and foremost before you can deal with any of these things. Don't go out there on your own. Don't try and deal with these things on your own. God will take care of you. And God, we always mess this up. (laughs) 
we always go into the situation try and take care of it ourselves and then have to backtrack and go oh god i need you with me is there ever going to come a time god where every single thing we do first and foremost is laid at your feet and then we do whatever your will is i doubt it we're kind of selfish people we're also very independent people and we think that we can take over these situations we think we can be in control of these situations and paul's really clear with timothy who he loves so much don't do that call on god's strength you have to have that endurance first and foremost second be careful of who you're learning this from there are so many false teachers out there be really clear about what it is you're learning the purity of your scriptures and then be in my word be in God's word so that you're learning what it is that he wants you to know and then go and tell other people. God, help us to get this order right. To call on you first and foremost. To not head out onto our own adventure in this world and then have to backtrack and go, oh, well, I tried it my way. That didn't work, obviously. And so now I'm back, God, and I need your help. We've wasted all that time, all that energy, and now we're back doing it the way you ask us to do it in the first place. God, help us build up that endurance. It comes over time of constantly seeking you first, of praying to you, working on a relationship with you. Uh, Part three of what Paul's talking about, about being in the scriptures and knowing what is true, uh, avoiding false teachers. All of that helps build up endurance. But first and foremost, we need to seek you, God. We completely miss that point on so many levels. We think that we only need to come to you when our life is in shambles. And that's not what you say to us at all. You simply want us to have a constant relationship with you. Bringing everything, including everyday matters, to you and laying them down at your feet. God, help us get this endurance part right so we can run run that race that Paul talks about with Timothy. So that we can endure even if we're in jail with pending death and all of our friends have left us. I can't even imagine what that would feel like. But it was only because of your endurance, your strength, God, that Paul was able to handle that. And still send out your disciples, God, to tell everyone the incredible good news that you shared with Paul and with Timothy and with all of the other people at that time. God, I thank you for your strength, that you are willing to provide us that before we head out onto the path of your will so that all of our steps will glorify you. Not that we will seek glorification first, mess up, and then have to come back to you. God, allow us to get this this order right as Paul has shared this uh, process with Timothy. To call on you first, to reach out to you first, to come to you first with what we think your will is and then allow you to put out the whole path right in front of us and help guide us step by step in what it is that you want us to do so that we're glorifying you. In your son's name I pray. Amen.